everyone. This is Miss Rachel. And today I'm going to read to you from this book called You Are in Ancient Greece. And I was inspired to pick this book and read to you guys about ancient Greece because we are entering the month of May. And the month of May was actually named after the Greek goddess Maya. So I thought it was appropriate that we uh, learn a little bit about ancient Greece. So I'm not going to read the whole book today, it's 36 pages long, but I'm going to read a few of the pages and I will pause at when I turn some of the pages so that if you are wanting to do some further research about ancient Greece, you can pause the video at that point and read what's on those pages and write about it yourself. Uh, so I'll read some of the pages and then you can read some of the pages on your own. So here we go. You are in Ancient Greece by Ivan Minnis. So here we have the table of contents. So if there's something in particular that you're looking for, you'll know where in the video to find it. The Greek world. There were many great civilizations around the world 2,500 years ago. In the Middle East, the Hebrews and Persians were building great cities. In Northeast Africa, ancient Egypt was the most powerful civilization. And in Central America, the Mayans were building huge pyramids. In Southern Europe, a civilization was developing in the mountainous land that is now called Greece. Ancient Greek civilization was at its most powerful between 800 and 146 BCE when it was taken over by the Romans. Ancient Greece was made up of many different city-states. They were independent, but they had many things in common. Athens and Sparta were the most powerful states. In this book, you will travel back in time to Athens at the time of Pericles. He was the leader of Athens in about 460 BCE. So there you see a statue of Pericles and a map of where Greece is, and ancient Greece was. The Ancient Greeks. As you walk through the busy streets of Athens, you see rich business people and craftspeople working in their shops. There are also poor peasants and laborers, and many slaves who are forced to work hard by their masters. Everyone wears a chiton, this is made from two large pieces of cloth held together by pins. You pull it over your head and tie it around your waist. Women wear their chitons long to the ground, while men gather them under their belts so that they only hang to their knees. Children dress in the same way as their parents. Both rich and poor dress in much the same way. Richer people may be able to afford brightly colored cloths. Most chitons are plain white and made of wool. You may see some people wearing hats called petasoses. They protect you from the sun. Tanned skin is very unfashionable. It shows that you have to work hard outdoors rather than relaxing indoors. Women grow their hair long and tie it in braids or ponytails. Men kept their hair short and grow beards unless they are soldiers. So we see here the goddess Athena wearing a long flowing Titan. Athens is a very beautiful city. There are many important buildings around its busy streets. The best place to go is the Agora. This is the marketplace in the middle of Athens. People gather here to buy food, cloth, and pottery. Others come to watch jugglers entertain the crowd. Near the marketplace is the Stoa. This is a building with many shops and stalls a bit like a shopping mall. It is a good place to meet friends. Athens is a busy city with many houses. They are made of mud with red clay roof tiles and are usually two stories high. Most houses have two or three rooms built around a small courtyard. The family spends a lot of time in the courtyard, eating and relaxing. Towering above the city is the Acropolis, this is where the temples and altars of the goddess Athena are found. She is said to protect the city. And if you go to Athens, Greece today, you can still visit the Acropolis.
Life is very hard for farmers in Greece. The soil is poor and rocky, and the climate is very hot. On flatter land, the farmers plow their fields to grow wheat or barley. Slaves do a lot of the work, but children are also expected to help out. Greek women help out at busy times, but their main job is to manage the household. Olives, figs, and grapes are grown on the poorer soil. Olives are very important. They produce oil, which can be used for cooking and to burn in lamps. Goats are kept on the rocky hillsides. They are able to feed on grass among the rocks. Their milk can be used for drinking or made into cheese. Children often watch over the goats, ready to warn the farmers if there is any trouble. Fishing is also very important. Greece is almost surrounded by the sea. Fishers travel out to sea in small boats. They catch all kinds of fish to sell at the marketplace. When you wake up in the morning, you will eat a breakfast of bread soaked in wine. The wine softens the bread, which is often very hard. Both rich and poor eat a lot of bread, and everyone drinks wine, even the children. This is because the water is dirty and may make you sick. Meat goes bad very easily in the hot sun. There are no refrigerators to keep it fresh. Fitch fish, uh, fish is much more popular. It can be bought fresh from the market. Goat cheese, olives, figs, and vegetables are also eaten. This is a healthy diet with plenty of vitamins and not too much fat. Sometimes rich men hold great banquets called symposia. During the long meal, there are poetry readings, music, and games. Women and children are not allowed. Paintings on vases and writings tell us about the food that the ancient Greeks ate. We know less about what poor people ate because most of them could not read or write. On this page, you will learn more about what it was like for children in ancient Greece. Some interesting facts about what that was like growing up there. Reading and writing. At school in Athens, boys are taught to read and write. They learn to write on wax tablets, scratching out the letters using a stylus. This means that if they make any mistakes, the wax can be smoothed over and used again. Older boys may be allowed to write on special paper called papyrus. They can use pens and ink. The ancient Greeks are famous for their writings. They do not know it, but their writings will continue to be read for future civilizations for thousands of years. We know about Greek writings because people still read them today. Socrates taught that discussing ideas was the best way to learn. Although his works are very famous, he did not write any of his own thoughts down. His ideas were written down by his pupil, Plato. Her Herodotus wrote books on important events, such as the wars the Greek fought. These were the first real history books. We know less about women because they left fewer writings. Also, the Greek alphabet was really important because they got their alphabet um, from the Phoenicians. Remember we talked about the Phoenicians in our story about the history of language? And their alphabet eventually became ours. So on this page, you're going to find out a bit more about the science and technology of ancient Greece. On this page, you'll find out about Greek art, including their visual art like pottery and sculptures. On this page, you'll find out about Greek entertainment. The Greeks started the Olympic Games, which still continue to this day. And all the world participates. On this page, you will learn about how their government was run. It was a democracy, a little bit like 
how our country is run today. On this page, you'll learn about Greek religion, which was very fascinating, really wonderful, interesting stories from ancient Greek religion, including Maya that we talked about in the beginning. Here are some general facts, sorry. Here are some general facts about ancient Greece. Their months had different names than ours, you'll see there, and we're in a bit of a different order. I wonder how our months became named that we use today. Here are some important dates and some information about their money system. In the back, there are some lists of other books that you could check out about ancient Greece. Uh, you could search for more information on the internet, make sure that you use reputable sources. And here we have a glossary, which tells you the definition of some of those bold words that you saw in the book. So if you weren't sure what one of those books meant, or one of those words meant, sorry, then you can look them up in the glossary. And here in the end, we have the index, where if you're trying to find the page number for a certain topic, you can look back here and flip back to that page. So I hope you guys enjoyed the book. Um, I hope that you will learn a little bit more and more deeply about ancient Greece. It was a very important civilization in history, really influenced a lot of uh, civilizations that came afterwards. So I hope you enjoyed it. Bye for now.